Has your home failed a home inspection during the sale of a house due to a number of electrical issues or deficiencies? It's quite common to see these in electrical boxes. We see them every day. So stick around and we'll show you a few. So behind me is a mock-up I've done on my bench here to show uh, you what we run into every day with receptacles and what we also run into with electrical boxes. Now, some issues that we see. The receptacle. This is a common receptacle in a box. Um, these screws are not tightened up. So what happens is, is if we have a metal box or you have a metal box in your wall um, and that goes back in there, then it can touch out and arc and short on the side of the box. Secondly, these connections that are stabbed in the back, although they are UL and CSA approved for it, are not a good practice to do. We see this all the time. These wires and this ground wire should not be just jammed in and stuck in the back. There is no real good contact points on each side of these receptacle inside of there. These will work fine with uh, small LED loads that are plugged in, but if you load this receptacle up, rated for 15 amps of any kind, then the two little pin connectors that are in the back here will not support that and end up burning the receptacle. The proper way to do this is to put them with uh, hooks on either side. So on the silver side we go white with a clockwise hook, and on, on the black side would go the black with a clockwise hook, uh, and I'll actually demonstrate that. Now in this box here, this octagon, there's three issues going on. Right off the bat, we see that the Marek connection is not in all the way. So this causes an issue where you could have a grounded neutral, or if it was on the hot side, then this could touch out to the side of the metal box. This could be in a light fixture, smoke detector, a variety of different type of applications. But this is not a good practice. Secondly, we notice that there's no clamp on the back of the box. So the wire is just dangling in midair. And thirdly, this one coming through a half inch knockout has absolutely nothing on it. So this wire, which is uh, Lumex or NMD type, can actually arc or short, short out on the side of the box. So we'll show you how we fix these uh, simple issues quite quickly. So this plug issue, unfortunately, uh, we don't want to just go ahead and cut them off the back, which is what we have to do to repair it. So we're going to go ahead and do that. But we don't recommend that we would ever use uh, the same receptacle because then what happens is, is on the back of the receptacle, you actually have the little copper tab sticking out the back, which is also not a good situation to be in. So we're going to get a different receptacle. Grab one off the bench here. And we are going to restrip these wires with an actual pair of strippers. We're going to strip them back about three quarters of an inch and we're going to put hooks on them in a clockwise motion. Not counterclockwise, I guess it depends on which way you turn it. <laughs> and we're going to do that the same with the bare grounding conductor. Now, the important part, when they go on the receptacle, they have to go on the receptacle like that. So the hook needs to face this way, not the opposite way. And the reason for that is because when we tighten down these tr screws, it pulls the wire into place. If we go the opposite way, it will tend to want to pull the wire off of the receptacle, and that is actually a good connection. We need to make sure that we get both tightened down if there's only one set of wires on the receptacle, and that's so it doesn't arc against the side of the box. And these are common issues that we fix all the time. And again, we're gonna do it on the other side of the box. Tighten up our spare neutral connection, identify conductor, silver screw, whatever you may want to call it, and then again with the copper wire onto the green screw is how we do it. One final step, when we put a new receptacle on, we'll roll the wires into the box to keep, and we'll shove back when we do it to keep anything from coming out into the receptacle and then the receptacle gets screwed on. So that's a simple fix for the receptacle. Now I'll focus in on the octagon box. 
So the octagon box, the white wire that was, was too long. We're simply going to remove the marrette, give a couple extra twists, cut the wire shorter on an angle, which helps make the marrette bite better. And then we're going to put the marrette back on so that we don't see any bare conductors showing. Secondly, the box clamp. There's a second one in there. Usually we'll use these right out of the box. If not, we always have spare boxes in our truck. And we will flip that around and put that on the conductor that is does not have one on. Excuse my arms here. It's a little hard to get in place. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, keep giving me problems. There we go. And we're going to screw that in. Try not to cross thread it. And make sure the wire is pulled up into place. So that we have a little bit showing of the insulation. And then we're going to just gently tighten that down to the point that it just grabs but does not pinch the wire. Now, the biggest one, this half inch knockout. Someone has left the knockout in the back of the box. So of course we'd shut the power off first, pull our wires out of the way, leave them connected, rip the back of this box connector out, finish it off. We have a nifty little trick. Two things we can do. One, we can use a bushing grommet, which is a black half inch grommet, to go in there. As long as this wire is not touching against metal, we're absolutely fine. However, we can't do that in this situation unless we disconnect the wires. So, I don't know if these are made by Ideal or Levington. We have a dual rated half inch plastic box connector. So it's actually rated to go inside the box because it has a little lip on it or outside the box. And on the other side, it has a groove in it so we can fit it around the wire that is actually in place. We just need to make sure that we get the wire connector inside in the right place. So that would need to point inward when we stick it on this wire. So what we do, or what I do, is usually bend that out a little bit with my screwdriver and then I'll stick the wires in I rustle them around get it up into place get it that it's sticking into place I know this is hard to see with two hands and then we're going to shove the wire box connector into place and it should snap usually with a little help from a set of linesmen and not damage the wires because it can be quite tough to get in there. I'm at the wrong angle to do this, so let's go over to the other side here. There, that gave me some shoot power, and then we can pull it through until we see insulation. There we go, and now we have a proper box connection that is CSA and UL approved inside of that box which solves the problem quite quickly. So there you have it. These are a few common box mistakes that we see made by DIYers uh, all the time. Um, we get called in on inspections to repair this stuff um, and that's how we basically do it. Uh, but we see that stuff every day. So I hope you like the video. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you guys next week.